You are a disgrace. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dick Matthews. And I'm Robert Anderson. And you're watching OIC oh, News. Today we have the pleasure of reflecting on Oberon High School's very own public speaking competition. Right you are, Dick. Today we'll be looking at a number of charismatic characters from Oberon High School who have been chosen at random to represent the school. Kicking off, we have Stacey New to talk to us about the responsibility and dangers of the uranium trade. Think about this for a moment. You're a soldier in war and the gun that you carry is your life support. You decided to defend your nation out of dedication and loyalty to your country. Your fellow soldiers are your only connection to other humans and every day you fear you will never live to see your loved ones back home. What you have endured is unimaginable. What you have seen is too painful to remember, but still you fight for Australia. Suddenly you are face to face with the enemy. You both have guns and you are fighting a fair fight. But all is not fair in the world, and you are dead before you can even blink. The enemy had an advantage. The gun that you never let out of your reach was rendered completely useless by their nuclear weapons. Now who do you think is responsible for the death of that soldier? Would it be the enemy that pushed the button? The man that supplied the nuclear bomb that brought you to your death? The scientist who created the weapon? Or would it be the person who supplied the materials to make the weapon? Breathtaking. Simply breathtaking. Robin, what a great start to the competition. Right on, Dick. You just don't see public speakers like that anymore. Next up we have Jess Pulford who takes on the persona of our very Earth in an effort to push her message forward and for her audience to understand the true damage that is being caused to our planet. As you know, I've been around for a long time. Almost four billion years. In fact, I was here long before you were born. Even though you humans had not been around for as long as I have, You've had a huge impact on my health and well-being. You affected my environments in extraordinary ways, some which are positive, but most which are negative. For the most part, we've had a tense relationship. However, things have started to worsen, and this is having a great impact upon me. Since the first cave dweller, you've searched methods to make your way of life easier and more comfortable. Your natural curiosity has helped you produce the most astounding, most helpful instruments known to humankind. In this, in this process, my health has suffered from a growing technology. Let me start with the Industrial Revolution, 1750 to 1850. You call this the birth of a machine, I call this the last time I ever had an atmosphere without smog. The creativity of this girl is just beyond me. I don't know about you, Dick, but I feel a little responsible myself. Nobody cares what you think, Robin. On to the next speech. All right, next up is George Gray it gives us a political insight on how we should run the world. You all must realise that I'm in favour of the ruling with an iron fist approach on life. The notion that fear is a necessity and decimation of the weak and unruly is appropriate. Well, this again rings true to some degree. What exactly would keep any of you from turning the key on a country that threatens your way of life? Not your conscience, not that of moral high ground, but the fear that grips one's heart and squeezes relentlessly until the blood sits still in your veins. The fear that comes hand in hand with knowing that the time in which you will meet your ultimate demise is near. And having nuclear weapons at one's disposal keeps copious amounts of this crucial dread left sitting dormant in another nation's mind. And will effectively keep them from making the crucial mistake of underestimating you as the most powerful entity on earth. The enthusiasm and power in this young man is just extraordinary. If he goes into politics, I can see our country progressing at warp speed. Here to pull us back to the topic of the uranium trade, we have Laura Schofield, who warns us of the uranium's dangers and health threats of radiation. After an entire year, the once beautiful country is still in pieces. Australia should not provide India with the resources to make nuclear power when we know the possible outcomes. There should be no questions or consideration to the issue. We should not export uranium to India. India and uranium don't mix. On the 11th of March, 2011, off the east coast of Japan, an earthquake registering 8.9 on the Richter scale triggered a devastating tsunami. In the wake of its destruction, a nuclear power plant began to leak. While the short-term effects of radiation cause vomiting, nausea and blood count drops, the long-term effects will scar Japan for generations to come. The thousands of lives lost in this tragedy have ruined the future for many civilians. There are girls that will now never become mothers men that will never provide for a family. But worse than this, 
is those who have already lost, the ones who had a daughter, her face washed away before her parents' eyes. For those who continue to live in the infected area, they run the risk of rapid death and neurological effects. There is a strong likelihood that the people of India will have to live through this same devastation if we provide them with uranium. What a great speech to finish on. Every aspect of this speech ties together to create an unbiased, informative piece that successfully addresses the issues for the audience. Well, that's about all we have time for today. I'm Dick Matthews. And I'm Robin Anderson. And you've been watching OIC, OIC News. News. Be sure to tune in next week for our exclusive report on the unusually cruel punishment for being out of uniform. Mr. K has a wrap on that one. Good evening.